So, let us look at uh, off policy learning in a little bit more detail now, right. So, we already looked at on policy versus off policy, we said SARSA is on policy and uh, Q learning is off policy. The main reason was uh, we said that uh, we will have uh, two different policies, right. So, one according to which we are taking samples from the world, but another policy that we are trying to evaluate, right. So, in the Q learning case, it was the greedy policy that we are trying to evaluate, but epsilon greedy policy or some other, uh, you know, random policy that we are using for drawing samples, right. So, that is that was why it is called off policy, right. So, but there is a very specific instance, right. From the same Q function, there is a greedy policy versus an epsilon greedy policy. So, that is what we were looking at, right. But the idea behind off policy learning can be generalized even further and I am going to cover this a little bit because later uh, we will be using off policy updates uh, uh, in many, many algorithms that we will see, right. So, we will look at it in a little bit more detail, right. So, the idea behind this is uh, you have one policy pi, right, which we call the target policy or the evaluation policy for which you have to compute v pi or q pi. So, whatever be the case, you are trying to compute v pi and q pi for a policy pi, right. But you are not able to sample the world according to pi, you are sampling the world according to mu for whatever reason, right. So, what are possible reasons? Pi could be, uh, you know, a deterministic policy, like in the greedy policy case, there was no exploration, there was only one action for every state, right. So, that was what pi was. In such a case, you will not get any exploration in the world while you are drawing samples and therefore, you might get stuck in some local optima, right. And therefore, you want to have some kind of a stochastic behavior in order to draw samples. Therefore, your behavior policy could be something that is stochastic, while your target policy could be deterministic. So, this is one of the most common cases where we use off policy learning, right. There could be other cases where we use off policy learning, where you are observing somebody else behaving in the world, but you want to learn about a specific policy pi, but you do not still yet have access to the world, right. So, somebody else is behaving, so another agent is actually generating samples in the world and you are observing those samples. So, but still you want to learn about pi, right. In such a case, again you can use this kind of an off policy learning. So, both pi and mu can be stochastic. Right, and you are trying to learn about uh, pi while observing samples taken according to mu because somebody else is drawing samples uh, or you are following a different policy for whatever reason because the task is different, you are following a policy mu while at the same time you want to learn how policy pi will perform on this task. So, you could actually keep updating your uh, uh, v pi while you are updating your v mu also, right. So, the, all of these things are possible. So, these are many reasons why of policy learning is there. I will talk a little bit about why people started thinking about off policy learning when we talk about hierarchies uh, later. But now off policy learning is something that is very well uh, established uh, in particular because uh, uh, when you are trying to apply reinforcement learning to many real systems, right, uh, you might have a specific policy that uh, the company is already deployed in the system, right. You will not allow to use your own policy in the system because that policy has not been evaluated. You do not know how good the policy is going to be, right. So, you have to look at the samples drawn by the existing policy implemented by the company and use that to evaluate the policy that you are proposing. So, that you can now put that policy into action once once uh, uh, the evaluation is good, right. So, therefore, uh, that is one thing which people use for uh, use of policy learning for. Right? So, so let us look at this, right. So, the first thing that we have to assume is we will assume some kind of coverage, right. So, for every action that can be taken under pi. So, what do I mean by that? If pi of a given s is greater than 0 in that particular state s, yes, so there is some probability that a can be taken. That means that mu of a comma a, a given s should also be greater than 0, right. That makes sense? If there is some probability that I will take the action a under pi, then there should be some probability that I will take action a under mu. It does not have to be the same probability, that is that. If the action probability of taking the action under A is 0, I do not care if I take the action under mu or not, I can just safely ignore it, right, even if I take the action under mu. But if, if I can take the action under pi, I need to have occasionally sample what will happen if I take action A, right. So, therefore, under mu also, the probability of taking action A should be non zero, right. So, this, this you know, this does not preclude this following condition, right. Pi can be greedy. Right, as long as mu is epsilon greedy. So, remember if it is epsilon greedy, then every action has a probability of epsilon by n of being taken, right. 
So, including the greedy action, it will have some probability of being taken, right. So, therefore, this is fine. So, pi can be greedy while um, you can be epsilon greedy or some other exploratory uh, epsilon soft policy, it is fine. So, that is that's the, that's the assumption of coverage, right. So, now let us take a look at the, the simple idea behind uh, what is called important sampling, ok. So, important sampling is a uh, technique where I want to compute some statistic, let us say I want to compute the expectation of f of x, right, where x is a random variable, right. I want to compute the expectation of f of x, where x is distributed according to p, right. So, p is the probability distribution that describes x, right. So, what is this equal to? This is equal to summation over all possible x, p of x into f of x, correct. So, that is what uh, uh, when I say I want to compute the expectation of f of x when x is distributed according to p, right. But then it turns out that I cannot sample according to p to compute this expectation. I can only sample according to q. I can draw samples according to q from my uh, 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 distribution, right. So, how will I do that now? Uh, from, from my data, I can only sample according to q. I cannot sample according to p. So, what I do? I multiply and divide by q here. Right. So, I multiply and divide by q, ok. Multiply and divide by q. So, now this quantity becomes my sample, right. This quantity becomes my sample, this one that is put in, in brackets becomes my sample, and this is the probability of taking that sample, right. So, now summation over x qx into px by qx into f of x. So, now this is equivalent to saying that hey, I am going to compute the expectation according to q not according to p. I wanted the expectation according to p. Now, I am saying I am going to compute the expectation according to q, but for each sample I have, I am going to weight it by this ratio p x by q x into f of x, ok. Is that clear? So, instead of saying that I am going to compute the expectation of f of x according to p, I am going to say I am going to compute the expectation of f of x times some w of x, f of x times some w of x according to q, ok. So, instead of f of x by p, I am going to compute w x f of x according to q, right. So, where this weight w s f of x, right, the weight w s f of x is given by p x by q x, where p x is the probability of seeing x under the original distribution and q x is the probability of seeing x under the sampling distribution, ok. So, that is why this is called important sampling because this this weight that I have here right p x by q x is, is a measure of how, how important the sample x is. So, why is that? Suppose x is very probable under p, but very rare under q, right. That means, I am going to see it very, very occasionally. That means, I will have to give it a lot of weight in computing the expectation because this is something that is frequent under p, but under q I can only, I will see this only very rarely and therefore, whenever I see this under q, I have to latch on to it and give it a larger weight. So, that is basically uh, why it is called an importance uh, 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 weighted sampling or important sampling and this uh, uh, scaling factor is called the importance weight, ok. And this also tells you why uh, we had the condition earlier, that alignment uh, condition earlier, uh, the coverage condition, right. So, uh, whenever p of x is non-zero, right, we want q of x to be non-zero, otherwise this ratio, whenever p of x is non-zero, we want q of x also to be non-zero, otherwise this ratio is not defined, right, because there will be p of x will be some positive number and q of x will be zero, so therefore this ratio is not defined, right. So, whenever p of x is zero, we can kind of ignore it from the summation, therefore I do not care about what q of x is, q of x can be zero also, but uh, I, I, I do not care about that because this thing will will actually not be used in my expectation computation. That sample x will not be used in my expectation computation. So, that is that is basically what important sampling is and we can take this important sampling idea and apply it to off policy learning. How? So, somehow we have to figure out what will be, first of all we have to think about what is my x, right, what is my, what is my f of x, that is something that I have to think about, right. The second thing is how will I compute my p of x? Now, my p of x is going to be some function of pi, right, because that is my uh, uh, my target policy, right. So, p of x 
will be some function of pi and q of x will be some function of mu right. So, p of x will be some function of pi and q of x will be some function of mu and I will I will use this idea uh, this important sampling idea to, to do uh, efficient learning for off policy sampling as well ok. So, how do we do that right. So, I have written down the expression here, but we will just sit down and look at how this expression comes about right. The first thing we will have to think about is what is my x right, what is my x. So, my x is the, the, the random variable right. So, what is my random variable here? My random variable here is actually the, 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 the return right. So, the random variable is actually the return because that is what I am trying to uh, uh, sample here and I am taking the average of that return to get my value function right. So, that is that is uh, uh, that is what I am looking at right. So, I am looking at expected value of g t that is that is the thing right. So, now my g t on uh, but is dependent on the sequence of states that I am going to see right, the trajectory that I am going to see right. So, my g t depends on the actual trajectory that I am going to see right. So, let us say my trajectory is uh, 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 as some trajectory is now run for some t time steps. So, my rho t t rho t capital T is essentially the importance weight right that I have to assign to the the sample that I have drawn that is of length uh, you know capital capital T right. So, what is the so g t right. So, basically what I am saying is g t is going to look like this r t plus 1 plus blah 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 all the way to uh, gamma t minus t minus 1 r capital T right. So, that is basically what I have gotten. So, I have to look at what is the probability that I have generated this right. So, what is the probability I have generated this? So, it is essentially a function of my policy pi and the transition that I am making which is given by p right. So, let us say that this return comes from looking at uh, you know st, at, st plus 1, at plus 1 and so on so forth right. So, now what happens ok, what is the probability that I pick at in st that is pi times what is the probability st plus 1 resulted from st by taking action at. So, probability of st plus 1 given st comma at. Likewise, then probability of picking at plus 1 in st plus 1 and, and so on so forth. So, that is basically how this is going to go right. So, this will be the, uh, uh, the probability of uh, uh, each of these uh, quantities right. So, my, my numerator is going to be the complete probability of the trajectory. So, this is pi of at given st then p of st plus 1 given st comma at then I will have pi of at plus 1 given st plus 1 p of st plus 2 given st at uh, st plus 1 at plus 1 and keeps going right. So, that is how it is going to be right. So, this is pi of right until going all the way until p of s t given okay. So, that is basically the numerator right and likewise my denominator will be what is the probability of seeing the same trajectory when I am following policy mu as opposed to following policy pi right. So, what will happen is wherever there was a pi that will become mu the rest of it will stay the same right wherever there is a policy pi it will become mu and the rest of the policies uh, uh, probabilities become the same. So, that is basically what my denominator would be. Now, what I can do is this corresponding transitions will get cancelled out right because they are the same in the numerator and the denominator what I will be left with is the following uh, uh, product right. So, for every uh, uh, for every step right. I look at the ratio of pi of a t given s t divided by mu of a t given s t right. So, that will be my ratio pi of a t given s t divided by mu of a t given s t will, will be the ratio and then I will I will take the product of these ratios or I can also take the 
sum of log of pi by mu. Right. So, I can do this also. So, I can take the log and take the sum so that th this is more tractable because I am taking the products it can become very very small very fast. I can also do this in terms of uh, uh, taking the log and, and, and taking the sum. Right. So, that is uh, that is something that I can uh, I can do. Right. Um, now, that gives me the uh, important sampling uh, weight. Right. So, once I have the important sampling weight I can do this uh, uh, average return uh, for uh, V of s which is basically uh, G t right g t weighted by this uh, 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 important sampling ratio and divided by the total uh, important sampling weights that I have. So, that so that I basically get the average of the return right. So, that is basically what uh, what I can do with off policy right. So, this is off policy Monte Carlo uh, with weighted uh, uh, important sampling. So, that gives me uh, that is this uh, expression. 